Welcome to Just Asia, AHRC TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. UN publishes report of serious abuses against Rohingya in Burma. Philippines president orders police to stop all anti-drug operations. The post transitional justice bodies in confusion. Cambodian group visits mining activists in northeast Thailand. Six-year-old girl raped in Pakistan. Welcome to AHLC TV's Just Asia. I'm April Wong. This week's episode of Just Asia begins with Burma. The UN has published a report detailing testimony of mass gang rape, killings and other human rights abuses against the Rohingya by the Burmese military. Testimony was taken from 204 Rohingya refugees who fled to Bangladesh after the violence began in Rakhine State in October 2016. A team of UN investigators interviewed these refugees, the vast majority of whom had witnessed killings, while half of the women interviewed had been victims of sexual violence. Sufra women told investigators how their children, including a newborn, were trampled or cut to death. They also accused the Burmese military of opening fire on fleeing people, setting fire to entire villages and deliberate destruction of food and paddy fields. Human Rights Watch issued a statement on Monday accusing Burma's military forces of rape and sexual assault against Rohingya women and girls as young as 13 during the military operations. According to the New York-based rights group, army officers and border guard police took part in rape, gang rape, invasive body searches and sexual assaults in at least nine villages in Rakhine State's Mandal district between 9 October and mid-December. While the rights group called for an independent international investigation into the abuses by the military and police, Christopher Lamb, president of the Australian Myanmar Institute, encouraged any independent investigation to be accompanied by discussions with Burma's military. I think what the international community needs to do is engage the Myanmar government and the agencies, engage the Temadao in the search for long-term solutions, Lamb said. Although the Burmese government and Aung San Suu Kyi have largely dismissed claims of abuse, Suu Kyi promised to investigate the UN allegations. Next, in the Philippines, President Duterte has ordered the police to stop all anti-drug operations following the killing of a South Korean businessman and an Amnesty International report alleging police were making money from drug-related killings. The order, announced during a speech to soldiers at the presidential palace, does not end the crackdown on drugs. As Duterte added that a drug enforcement agency under his office and possibly the military would continue the fight. I have ordered the police to stop all operations, Duterte said during the speech. No policeman in this country anyway is allowed to enforce laws related to drug and campaign. The speech follows months of allegations by human rights groups that the police have used the officially sectioned crackdown to conduct extrajudicial killings. More than 7,000 people had been killed in the crackdown. Last week, Amnesty International released a report alleging that police have planted evidence and stolen from people they had killed. Duterte said he had been embarrassed that anti-drug officers had abused their power to engage in the kidnapping and strangulation of businessman Ji Luk Ju in the grounds of the National Police Headquarters. While it is not yet clear what role the military would play in the drug war, human rights groups are concerned as the military has an equally notorious image. In Nepal, the mandate for the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the Commission of Inquiry on Enforced Disappeared Persons is fast approaching an end. With February 10 as the deadline to complete their work, Commission members and conflict victims are beset with confusion and uncertainty. The two commissions were established two years ago to investigate conflict era cases. As per the existing law, the commission's term can be extended by one year if deemed necessary. 
The Commission for Disappeared Persons has already requested the government for an extension. However, the extension will not be of much help as the two commissions are constrained by the lack of required legislation. Before extending terms, the government should amend the existing Transitional Justice Acts and enact the necessary laws. This will bolster the confidence of conflict victims, who do not trust these commissions as they were formed without consulting the victims, and by even ignoring the Supreme Court verdict that directed the process be made victim-centric. With no decision in place, and with their tenure ending on February 10th, conflict victims are increasingly worried about whether justice will ever be served. Victims want closer to their cases and an end to their fears goal. Moving to Thailand, an indigenous Cambodian community, the Highlander Association, visited the gold mining operation in Lui Province, northeastern of Thailand, on February 7 to 8. The purpose of this visit was exposure and education, to learn about the effects of mining on the environment, as well as how to advocate against mining. Since 2006, Thai mining company Tong Kong Company Limited operated a mining site in Wang Sapun district, Lui province. This led to heavy metal contamination of the river and the death of one villager from eating fish from the river. As a result, six villages formed a defenders group, the Kong Rak Bankert Group. They are calling for the closure of the mining site and for the company to rehabilitate the environment. Consequently, the KLBK members were implicated in 22 criminal and civil cases. On 15 May 2014, 20 villages were attacked by armed men hired by retired military officials, although the court of first instance delivered the judgment stating that the retired military officials were guilty, but the mining company are trying to operate the mining site again. The KLBK group is now a well-known defenders group and many academics, students and staff from local and international organizations visit them and the mining site. With two companies preparing to operate gold mines in Ratanakiri, the Cambodian Highland Association came to learn about the advocacy and social movements from the KLBK. They had a great discussion with Mr. Samai Pakmi, the president of Kaolong, local administrative district, Mr. Samai was charged with mismanagement offenses by the gold mining company because he did not approve their mining license. Just Asia interviewed Mr. Suthera Pan from the Highland Association. Movement of the people in this village quite quite strong and they are beat together in terms of fighting for the land, for the uh, for their uh, rights, especially. There's also the support from the local authorities that they play a very important role even though some of the local authority will bow off but there's still some local authority who support and always help the people in, in, in the village in order to fight against mining projects. Uh, this has already happened and one of the things that we learned that in this mining project we found that uh, it's at the beginning every gold mining, every company is always promised offers good things to the communities but in the real uh, real situation based on the visit at the field today we can see that no uh, rehabilitation plan no decommissioning all of those uh, all of those uh, affected area mm -hmm. so it's all the man the, the mining goal all left for the uh, company but here they still have the land contamination so it affects to the people and especially the stream the river the creek and it affects to the natural resources this is bring very bad and negative impact to the livelihood of people and the human rights as well um the things that i need to apply in in, in my community is that when i found that the the, the role of the local authorities is quite important to support to to do motivate the people, to encourage the people to stand up. I think, uh, if possible, I'd like to to share or to bring back our group, the local authorities from, from this visit. They go back to their home and they share the experience from this. And they will promote more the idea and knowledge 
how to help and support their, their own people over there. In terms of the unity of the people, I, I saw it's very important. Even uh, everywhere, even the uh, ordinary people, or the majority people, or the indigenous people, they should have very strong solidarities and uni unity to work together in order to express and demand from what has been affected to their communities. I think it's quite important. In Pakistan, a mentally disabled six-year-old girl was raped and dumped in a sewage drain after having her neck split on January 19th. However, luckily she survived after being taken to hospital. After finding no result of police investigation, the Chief Justice of Pakistan took action through a motto notice for regular hearing. Child sexual abuse has become a common phenomenon in Pakistan. In 2016, 2,127 cases of child sexual abuse were reported across the country. Going by the numbers, each day 10 children are raped in Pakistan, but experts warn that the number could be much higher as many cases go unreported due to the stigma attached to rape in the country. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on this and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.alrc.asia/justasia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.